It's Winter Picks Dinner, Universal City Walk Edition. Hey everyone, it's Mammoth Club and we're back with another episode of Winter Picks Dinner, the series where we duke it out over a multi-course dinner. This time we're at Universal City Walk, which is their shopping and dining district. Let's go. I think I'm going to win this time. I feel good about my chances. I did very poorly in the Disney version, but I got this. The way this works is simple. We will be playing a round of rock, paper, scissors to decide who is in control of each course. The person that wins gets to choose the location as well as whatever we order, but they need to choose carefully because there are no repeat locations and this is a five course dinner. There are lots of great places to choose from here at City Walk, which makes our choices even harder because some places are great for multiple reasons. But we're looking at places like Cowfish, Big Fire, Twosome Chocolate Emporium, Voodoo Donuts, Margaritaville. We have to choose wisely. You must choose. But choose wisely. Let's get to it with round one. Course one. So you go on shoot, right? You go on shoot. Ready? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. Ha ha! All right, fine, congratulations, you won the first round. Where are we getting drinks? Um, Tucson has a nice chocolate old fashioned, but I'm gonna be too sweet. Margaritaville, but I'm not feeling tequila right now. Cowfish, no, cowfish is for later for sure. Big Fire, more bourbon. Big Fire offers a variety of American fare with their shtick being that everything or almost everything on their menu touches the grill, including some of the desserts. And while it is a great sit-down venue here in Universal City Walk, a little-known fun fact is, is there is a side entrance, and that is where we are headed to have our first cocktails of the day at the Big Fire Bar. As true theme park professionals, we're rope dropping a bar. That's right, the bar opens in one minute, but you know what, if I've taught you anything, is that rope dropping is often the key to success. So that applies to the bar too, I guess. Consistency is key. Big Fire is really one of the more unique and for me personally pleasing spaces in City Walk, just because it's very much a Ron Swanson chic space. Okay, let's begin the barbecue. Not to mention the fact that it has both affordable food and drink, and that includes some tableside s'mores. And who doesn't love some pipe and hot schmoes? They wash them down with plenty of fluids. Isn't the vibe in here just wonderful? It's also worth noting that Big Fire does accept walk-ups, but you can make reservations as well. So if you're coming at a particularly busy time, probably the best advice I could give you is to go ahead and make a reservation if this is one of the places that you definitely want to stop. Taking a look at the Big Fire menu, I've had a lot of the items here. I think this restaurant's awesome, and a few highlights for me are definitely the bourbon cheese fondue that comes with shishito peppers and bread and cauliflower. It is awesome. Definitely a big appetizer that a bunch of people can share. I was pleasantly surprised by the trout dip when I tried that as well. Um, I also love these wood charred Brussels sprouts. They've got a variety of soups and salads, but then of course they're known for their meats on the grill, like steaks, they've got a variety of cuts there. Um, they also do shrimp, scallops, pasta. But the thing I was most amazed by, again, in addition to just getting a steak, is this short rib pasta was fabulous when I tried that. Got some burgers and sandwiches as well. And it's helpful to know that you can actually order off the menu if you are coming in for the bar seating. So if you're not able to get a reservation or a table, you can order some things here. The drink menu at Big Fire is very whiskey focused. You'll notice that they have a lot of great old fashions, Manhattans, which actually might be where I'm headed. But one thing to point out is that they actually have a Big Fire Select Barrel Woodford Reserve, which sounds delightful. There are also a number of other specialty cocktails involving other bits of liquor, so you have vodka as well. But, but what you should probably take a look at is the amazing selection of whiskeys, bourbons, and ryes. So if you are a big whiskey person, Big Fire is certainly a place you should check out. I know it's a complete shock that I would come to a bar that specializes in bourbon and whiskey and order an Old Fashioned, um, but that's what I did. I got the smoked Old Fashioned though, which is a little bit more unique and special. It's Knob Creek smoked maple bourbon, and then it's got beef jerky um, and uh, an orange wedge there and a cherry, a Luxardo cherry. But what's so special about it is they actually smoke the glass 
over oak, and then that's what you are, are served your drink in, and it smells phenomenal. As for me, I got the classic Manhattan, which is made with Big Fire Select's Barrel Woodford Reserve, and a sweet vermouth with a cherry at the bottom. I don't know. I was just feeling something simple and classic that would highlight the flavor of a really, really nice bourbon, so I'm looking forward to this. Cheers to round one. Well, it's so good. It's so smoky. The maple comes through for sure and sweetens up the drink a little bit. Um, it reminds me of breakfast food because of that. Uh, but you know I don't like sweet drinks, so it's not too much. You're still very much tasting the alcohol. You're still getting that little burn in the back of the throat. The bourbon, um, because it's very, very simple. And then you can really taste and smell that smokiness, which make it different. I love it. It's, it's truly one of the best theme park old fashions that I've ever had. Um, and so if you are an old fashioned drinker, I highly recommend giving this one a whirl. This was a good choice. Although I am a little sad, this means we can't choose here for appetizers because that fondue is phenomenal. I'll take the train. Cheers, friends. The flavor of the bourbon is very forward, although it is somewhat dampened by the sweet vermouth. Honestly, Manhattans are just a classic way to consume really high-quality bourbon, and this is a great example of that. And listen, folks, I get it. If you're not a bourbon drinker, then Manhattans might be a pretty difficult thing to try just because it's so bourbon forward it's only two ingredients right bourbon and sweet vermouth but, but if you were to try one this would be the one to start with because it isn't super spicy it's not super hot and aggressive on the back of the throat it is a mild bourbon and a sweet vermouth that blend together for a very refreshing drinking experience round two delicious drinks acquired i think it will only help my performance i agree you ready yes you got this. I have faith in you. It's going to be okay. Classic Alan rooting for me. You got it. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, scissors, shoot. All right. Abs on me. Why am I so bad at this? There, there. There, there. All right. Where are we getting apps? This is the most important round because apps are the most important course. They are foundational. I would only eat appetizers if I had it my way. And I would fully agree with your decision. However, that is not the point of today. So we have Antojito, which has great, by the way, sorry for that pronunciation, which has great tableside guacamole. I would like that. You also have Margaritaville, which has some good nachos. I do like those nachos. Cowfish has sort of crab rangoon dip. I'm, uh, yeah, that that's not bad. Bows. I'm getting bows. So not crab rangoon dip. No, bows. <laughs> I think it's pretty unbelievable that you didn't pick crab rangoon dip. I just, I just really love cowfish. It's my favorite restaurant here, and I don't understand why you keep skipping it. Ben, the bow is a quick service option that serves one thing and one thing only, and that is bows. And they do it very, very well. It's a great grab and go option, especially if you're looking to try something new that's not necessarily normal theme park fare taking a look at the menu. As you can see, they have a variety of different proteins and toppings from the bowels. They've got seafood, they've got duck, chicken, brisket, they even have a veggie one. Which ones are you thinking? All right, let's go with kimchi fried chicken. Good choice. Pork belly. Are we just getting two? No, 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 absolutely not. We're gonna get four. We have to eat like so many more courses. I'm personally offended. I'm I'm seeing it. Okay. I'm a growing boy. <laughs> um, okay, then I also remember really liking the veggie last time we came here. Okay, then the beef brisket as well to round it out with four. You had me at fried jalapenos. I'm in. Also want to highlight they do have a nice variety of beers, sake, wines, uh, and that Ben the Bow is on mobile order. So during a much busier time than kind of the middle of the afternoon, like peak meal time, you may want a mobile order to save yourself some time. Here are our glorious bows. Trying to figure out which one is which. It looks like that. That's pork belly. This will be the fried chicken and kimchi, veggie, and then the beef brisket. Hello, fried jalapenos. This is the pork belly bao, which has pork belly, scallions, cucumber, honey roasted peanuts, and cilantro. Do you mind if I do? So the pork belly itself is super tender, very well seasoned. If you don't like cilantro, you're probably not going to like this. Uh, if you're one of those folks who has cilantro that tastes like soap, there's quite a bit of it here. The honey roasted peanuts are the most surprising addition. It's a welcome texture change uh, with the fluffy bao bun. Incredible. The first one I'm trying is the brisket. So it's beef brisket, fried jalapeno, pickled red onion, cilantro, and an avocado lime crema. Cheers. Mm. I 
feel like they've improved the beef one because I remember being excited about it and a little let down last time. This time it's excellent. First of all, the meat is very tender and juicy and that avocado lime crema is adding a little bit more moisture um, and a lot of flavor, some smoky flavor to the meat. I love the pickled red onion for a welcome crush and some acidity. And then you've got that fried jalapeno, which is my favorite part. It also adds crunch, but it also adds heat. I would say this is legitimately hot. So if you are not a spicy person, I would skip this one. But as someone who loves spice and finds heat rare to find in theme parks, this is excellent. I would definitely get this one again. Next up, I am trying the kimchi fried chicken, which has kimchi fried chicken, kimchi butter, gochugang, cucumber, scallion, and sriracha aioli. And for my second one, I'm mixing it up and trying a vegetarian option. This has mushrooms, spinach, caramelized onions, smoked ricotta cheese, sweet potatoes, and a tomatilla salsa. So I'm very excited about this. It feels like it's gonna be like Tex-Mex Asian fusion. Cheers. Cheers. So there aren't a lot of strong flavors of kimchi. I think it was more dominated by this fermented chili of the gochujang. Uh, the cucumbers lighten it all up. Very, very good chicken though. I mean, there's what's not to love is fried chicken in a bao bun. If you like fried chicken, you like this. It's very, very tasty. Would you say that one's probably the most approachable for people that haven't had a bao bun or aren't used to more of the adventurous flavors? Yes, I would agree with that. It's also a great introduction into flavors from this specific type of cuisine in a way that is approachable and isn't too off-putting. I'm unfortunately a little disappointed by the veggie one. I remember loving it last time. Unfortunately, this time I think it's a little over-salted um, and the texture isn't working for me as well as the last texture was. I prefer the crunch from that um, red onion and that fried jalapeno. And unfortunately, this was just kind of all mushy, I guess. I wish the sweet potatoes were a little firmer and crispier. So I personally probably wouldn't get this one again. I would stick with the pork belly um, or the beef brisket. Those are my two favorites of all the ones we had. Okay. I feel good. Entrees are what I want because I love cowfish. You do love cowfish. Are you ready? I want the jalapeno show stopper burger so bad. I have faith in you. Are you ready? Yeah. On shoot. Ready? Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. How does this keep happening? Oh my god. <laughs> you thought I was gonna go scissors? Oh, we'll do cowfish. We'll do cowfish. How am I so bad at this? We'll, we'll, we're gonna do cowfish. We're gonna do cowfish. It's a, oh. it's a pity cowfish, oh, but I'll, I'll take it because I wanna eat it. <laughs> cowfish can't seat us for a few minutes, which is fine by me. I'm letting the bowels settle. And we're gonna head into my favorite store to look around the Universal Legacy Store. This used to be the main Universal Studios store that has the vast majority of merchandise, but they made a bigger space for that. And so now this has a lot of throwback merchandise for attractions that don't exist anymore. And I bet you know which one I'm the most excited about. And I for one am very excited to see where Molly is running to. Oh, wait a minute, I have an idea. Tell us, what is it we are looking at? This is the actual screen used jacket that Chief Martin Brody, Amity Police Chief, wore in the 1975 cinematic masterpiece, Jaws. We're not only going to have to close the beach, we're going to have to hire somebody to kill the shark. Directed by Steven Spielberg. Magical. But the Chief Brody jacket isn't the only reason you should come in here. There's tons of fun merchandise, but more importantly, if you're a theme park nerd, there's things like models of old attractions. Here's Kong Frontation and props from other films. Like here's Arnold Schwarzenegger's jacket from Terminator 2. Hi, it's E.T. I know, that's the real E.T. That's the real E.T.? He was used in the movie. Ah. Oh. But displayed so nonchalantly. I know, but he was in the movie. Steven Spielberg touched that. He touched that. Don't touch it. I'll be right here. Anyway. Hey, Moles. Yeah, look, they have my name. Well, that's super exciting. Speaking of names. They never have my name. Can you name these Transformers? Um. Who's that guy? He's the bad one. He's a Decepticon. Oh, nice. Good job. I think his name is Megatron. Yes. Well done. What about this one? They don't really look like they do on the ride, but I think that one's 
Bumblebee. Nice. Two for two so far. And this guy, please tell me you know him. I think he would be Optimus Prime. That would be correct. He has the same voice as Eeyore. Yes. Also true. These are kind of interesting. They look decidedly uh, as if they're from the animated show, not necessarily from the Michael Bay films. I just don't think of Transformers as being, like, cuddly. You would want to cuddle up with Optimus Prime? I'm just saying it's they're plastic and metal, normally. But I guess if you love Transformers and you want your kid to have one. Yeah. Of course, the HP section is a delight as well. Here is a model of Sirius's motorbike. This is not a screen-used version, but this was unveiled and displayed for the opening of the attraction, Haggard's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM. And then I also love this model here of Hogsmeade. You can see all the detail. Here's Flight of the Hippogriff. There's Hogwarts with the little... Uh, opening there. You've even got the car oh, flying car up. Wow. I like that it even includes the Jurassic Park gates because it's like, you know, if you go over there, there's some different IP. They've really done a good job diversifying a lot of their merch for Harry Potter, which is good to see. It's not all just wands and things. What are you doing? Do we need it? We don't need it that much. <laughs> and would you look at that? The Goblet of Fire. This was in the queue for Dueling Dragons. Uh, which no longer exists, but it was a very cool queue. I wish they had kept that attraction, but I'm okay with it leaving now that Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM exists. You can also do the old school mold o -matics in here. You can do the little jaws. I actually have this one at home from when it was in the Summer Tribute Store, but it prints it out right here with a little rubber creation. It's very fun. And I just noticed they have another one. On my Back to the Future fans, look, they've got the tower, the clock tower. <laughs> I love the Legacy Store. I think it is such a fun place to just walk around and find some unique merchandise. But for now, Cowfish Calls. And I'm considering it a win even though I didn't win the round of Rock, Paper, Scissors because it's my favorite restaurant in City Walk. Cowfish, as the name might suggest, is a sushi burger bar. They've got great cocktails, a wide variety of sushi and gourmet burgers, and everything I've ever tried here is fabulous. We are sitting in the beautiful second story uh, patio here at Cowfish. It's really refreshing with the fans going. It's not too hot. I actually had my 30th birthday dinner up here a certain number of years ago. Not kidding when I say this is my favorite restaurant in Universal City Walk. Taking a look at the cowfish menu, like I said, it's sushi and burgers. So they have really simple sushi rolls all the way up to much more extravagant and gourmet sushi rolls. They also have some things like salads, but then they're also known for their burgers. They are have simple burgers, but they also have over-the-top burgers, things with peanut butter on them, things with jalapenos on them. And then they even have a specialty called burgerushi, which is a sushi roll burger. Burger, essentially. What? Burgushi. Burgerushi. <laughs> yep. Burger Burgushi. There it is. Uh, Seem like a Harry Potter spell. Burgushi. Uh, what would that do? Bad things. Uh, yeah. But Burgushi is essentially a cheeseburger if it was presented as a sushi roll. It's delicious. We can add that to our meal. I'm adding it to our meal. The food has arrived, and I'm literally so happy. This is my favorite burger. It is the Jalapeno Popper Show Stopper. So it's a beef burger. It's got jalapeno-infused cream cheese, jalapeno bacon, fried jalapenos, a jalapeno citrus aioli, lettuce, tomato, uh, fresh sliced jalapenos, and it's on a brioche bun. And then it comes with fries, but I asked if I could kick it up to the specialty truffle fries that also have got a little bit of cheese and scallion and bacon on top of them. And I picked up two of the fusion specialty rolls. The first roll we have is Mark's roll, which is fresh tuna, jalapeno, cream cheese, cani, and scallions on the inside, then coated with panko and flash fried. Uh, it's also served with a side of ponzu dipping sauce. Next up is Dion's OMG roll, which is tempura coconut shrimp, cani, and English cucumber inside, coated with tempura flakes and topped with fresh mango, avocado, and a spicy honey marmalade, along with some coconut flakes. I'm really excited for these. First up is Mark's roll in the ponzu sauce. Oh yeah, nice dip. Fresh 
first of all, the quality of the sushi is excellent. The tuna, great. The interior of the cream cheese is a nice juxtaposition. And the fact that they fried it and it was a flash fry means that there's some crunch to go along with some of the other flavors and textures that you can find here. The ponzu sauce is delicious. The addition of the sriracha and Japanese mayo really completes it and rounds out a nice flavor. It's on the spicier side for folks who might be sensitive to spice, but if you're like me and love that, this is for you. The Dion's OMG roll. What initially drew me to this was the coconut shrimp being the main centerpiece of the dish. Very, very good, incredibly light, flavorful, tropical, with just enough, enough of a texture differential with the coconut flakes to make it not feel one dimensional. It is sweet, not overtly so. Just a really nice counterbalance to Mark's roll. Eleven out of ten. I love this burger because I love a little bit of heat, and you definitely get that from the fresh jalapeno, from the fried jalapenos, which add a great texture along with the bacon, adds that smokiness, saltiness. And then you've got the cream cheese, which adds a little bit of sweetness, but it's jalapeno infused cream cheese, so it's still definitely got a little bit of a kick. The brioche bun is fabulous. I've never had a bad burger here, and I've tried several of them, but I keep coming back to this one because it's my absolute favorite. I'm also going to try one of these fries. They're really good. They're like thin McDonald's style fries. Love the little bit of crispy bacon, love the cheese. I wish it was a little trufflier, but they do have really good fries. And if you thought we were kidding about adding burgerushi to, <laughs> to the lineup, here is the bison burgerushi. It is seasoned bison. It's got roasted red pepper flakes wrapped in sushi rice and soy paper. Dusted with tempura flakes, topped with pickled green tomatoes, chipotle aioli, scallions, and cotija cheese. They also have a more classic cheeseburger style one of these, but this one we've not tried, and I'm very excited. The bison meat is fabulous. It is nice and tender and moist. Lots and lots of flavor. Love the little bit of tempura crunch that's added in there. Nice texture, break up. A um, little bit of spice with those red pepper flakes, not a ton, definitely not as spicy as my burger. Love the cotija cheese on top, which adds a little bit of saltiness, a little nuttiness. Lots of different, different flavors here. Very good burgerishi. Burgushi. Well, whatever. I'm just glad you like it. An absolutely delicious meal at Cowfish. I am so full. As a little cowfish pro tip, they do accept walk-ups, but now they also are taking reservations, which wasn't always the case. So if you would like to come here, especially during mealtime after the parks close or at the peak dinner time, highly recommend making a reservation on Universal's website. I am so full. I'm happy about it, but I am so full. You have not performed well. In rock, paper, scissors. It's kind of rude, but okay. I'm just observing a fact. I propose something different for dessert. What do you have in mind? So we're in the University Studios store. Correct. Specifically the big Harry Potter section. I'm delighted by it. Remember that Marvel game we played? My main man, Oscar Isaac. Oh. Moon Knight. Yeah. Oh. Let's do that here. Yes, what are the ground rules? The first person who runs out of something specific to a Harry Potter character or thing found in the universe mm -hmm. loses, and then the winner picks dessert, which should be Voodoo Donuts. Oh, no, too so for sure. Um, clarifying question before okay. we get going. Wands, is it like wand, or can I find like 20 different wands? Singular wand, just like singular broomstick. Okay, all right, let's go. All right. I feel like I could actually win this. Okay. I won Marvel. Starting strong with Slytherin. Following up stronger with Gryffindor. Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff. Broomstick. The Golden Snitch. The Deathly Hallows. This is a nice backpack. I'm put a lot of stuff in there. Why do I want so many bags? You have an entire like, room full of I bags. I, know. I just like bags. It's so many bags. 
How many can you wear at one time? I don't know. How many are there? TikTok joke. Moving on. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Dark Mark. There's a surprising amount of dark stuff in your selections. I like this sweatshirt too. Oh, kidoki. Death Eater. I think it only counts if you put that on. <sighs> okay. This was made for children. Looks nice. Patronuses. It's the stag. Yeah. And the whole back of the shirt says the spell, so. Wait, is that different? Can you now say spells? I could say spells if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say Defense Against the Dark Arts. Okay, then I'm going to say spells. The Marauder's Map. That would be a hard puzzle, I bet. It would be a very hard puzzle. Puzzles are also hard for me because I'm colorblind anyway, so this would be even worse. That's true. Also, I always like these shirts because part of it's heat activated, so the um, I'm up to no good only comes out when you stand in the sun. Oh. Diagon Alley. Hogsmeade. I'm going to be the first person today that, that stupid movie quotes don't count. Okay, but Dumbledore? <sighs> yes. Trust me, I don't want to count this quote either. Potions class. Platform nine and three quarters. The Hogwarts Express. Butterbeer. Hedwig. Chocolate Frog. School Trunk. Hogwarts Letter. Honey Duke Sweet Shop. Hogshead. Five hours later. Transfiguration. The Clash Transfiguration. We did McGonagall. Correct. All the other classes, but we did not do Transfiguration in the class yet. You are correct. We have not done Transfiguration in the class yet. Nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. It seems like the only thing I can win in this game is uh, the finding things. Activity, but all that matters is I don't have to eat a donut now. So, to Toothsome. I mean, I'm not mad about Toothsome either. Let's roll. Welcome to Toothsome Chocolate Emporium Savory Feast Kitchen. This is one of those places where you can get over the top desserts, like those freak shakes, but they also have a full menu. And what's fun about the menu is that a lot of it features chocolate, even the savory dishes. For example, I've had a steak here that had chocolate into the sauce on top. I've had a chocolate old fashioned. And honestly, the food surprises me every time I come because it's much better than I'm expecting at a gimmicky style restaurant. This is one I highly recommend. I think it's really fun for the whole family and uh, we're headed in to get dessert. Toothsome is incredibly popular, so I highly recommend making reservations if you want to do a full meal. However, if you just want to grab something sweet, not everyone realizes that they actually have the Candy Smith right here, which is where you can get gourmet candies like fudges and chocolates. And then they also have a dessert foundry where you can get those milkshakes and sundaes to go. The dessert foundry has a few tables inside, um, but you can get your shakes to go. They all come in a souvenir cup. And there's a variety of flavors from Cookie Jar, which has a full cookie on top of the chocolate chip cookie. There's a confetti shake, there's a strawberry cheesecake, an espresso, a marshmallow crisp, Oreo. My personal favorite is actually the That's Mint, which is a mint chocolate chip one. That's the one we'll be getting today. But all of their milkshakes are really good milkshakes in a souvenir glass, and then they're topped with another freshly baked dessert on top. Here she is in all her glory. I assume that as the person that said mint chocolate chip ice cream is the only kind worth getting, you're... Uh, Oh, and the Andy's Mint is gone. I assumed you're okay with my mint order. This is the, again, the That's Mint Shake. So it's a mint chocolate chip ice cream shake. And then you've got your chocolate and whipped cream. You've also got Andy's Mints and then a house-made mint cookie sandwich on top there. And what I love about their shakes is they actually blend whatever the topping is. They blend some of that up into the milkshake. So there's nice chunks in there. We're Lady in the Tramp in it. I Oh. oh, that is rich. And it's such a good milkshake. It is so good. Now, my problem with these over-the-top desserts is that at a lot of places, they look cool, but they do not taste good. The milkshake consistency isn't always right, but this is a very good milkshake, and it looks cool. It is so, so rich. I thought that maybe it was just that first hit of this that was going to feel that way, but no. Incredible flavor. Again. So minty. Oh yeah, so very minty. I think I've tried every one of these coming for different events, and the mint one is shockingly my favorite. I like the cookie one a lot too, um, but I feel like the mint curbs how sweet it is somehow, and how good is that? Yeah, it's incredible. It is very clearly the same ice cream that's going into the smoothie inside that cookie sandwich, and the cookie leaves that delectable bit of chocolate residue on your fingers, which... Uh, 
I'm never gonna complain about. Chewsome is so fun. Your kids will think you're the coolest ever if you bring them here. Get a couple of these shakes to share. They also, again, have great food. They've got Sundays. Really, really fun dessert place. And again, normally these kitschy places are not for me, but this one lives up to the hype. Big fan. First time there, big fan. Okay, it's the final round. We're not doing coffee here because there's literally just Starbucks, so there's no picking. So this is after dinner drinks, nightcap. You got this. Do I? Yes. I have faith. Ready? Yeah. On shoot. Yeah. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. Alrighty. <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to talk to you again. That's right, put on those hater blockers. <laughs> I like, in case anyone thinks we're making this up, like I, I wish, I wish. <laughs> I didn't realize I was as good at rock, paper, scissors. It doesn't even take skill. You're right. There's no skill in rock, paper, scissors. It's just pattern recognition. Where are we drinking? Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville is a chain with standard American fare. And while the food isn't necessarily anything to write home about, save those volcano nachos, that's actually not what we're here for. We are here to travel to the Lone Palm, which is just across the way from Margaritaville for our nightcap. The Lone Palm exists as an extension of Margaritaville. And while Margaritaville is a traditional sit-down venue, the Lone Palm is a place you can walk up a little bit more casually and grab a light bite or a beverage. If you're going to the Lone Palm, you're likely coming here for the margaritas, but that does not mean that they lack the rest of the bar accoutrement, that there's a full bar here. But of course, if you're going to come, you've got to get a margarita. So there's a tale about this plane our server just told us. It's a real plane actually flown by Jimmy Buffett as the captain, and he ha had Bono on the plane one time, and there were some military officials that thought they had illegal cargo on there for some reason, and they literally shot at the plane. There's actual bullet holes in it, and then Jimmy had to land the plane after that, um, and our server said he's not sure if it ever took flight again, but what a baller. Here are our margaritas, the final course of the evening. They're the same sons, salt on one, uh, but this is the perfect margarita. It's their version of a skinny marg. It is very, very simple. It is just tequila, triple sec, orange curacao, and a little bit of fresh lime juice. Just like I like a margarita, simple is ideal IMO. Cheers. Woo! I am about to be wasting away in Margaritaville. That's nice. I'm always a little wary of coming places like this that the margaritas are going to be super sickly sweet. Like it kind of gives you like T-Rex, Rainforest Cafe vibes. But this perfect margarita is delightful. I would dare say perfect. Oh, man. Anyway, it is definitely tequila forward. You can taste that there is tequila in there. There's two different kinds of tequila. Um, there's that tartness and acidity from the lime juice, a little bit of sweetness from the triple sec, and I like the curacao, which is a little bit something different. The best part about this is that it's not bogged down in sugar. You're not going to get a margarita. Um, I don't like margaritas that are going to just be laden with something that is so very sweet, which is what happens with a lot of theme park drinks. So. That's a win in my book. Had a lot of wins in your book today. Feels good. What a day, right? We're all winners here. <sighs> I'm not. I'm a loser today. How am I so bad at rock, paper, scissors? Yeah, I don't know. Couldn't be me. What was your favorite course today in City Walk? Ooh, it had to be cowfish. I think the burgushi was surprisingly tasty. The burgerushi was delicious. Mm hmm burgushi is very good. What was your favorite course today? Well, cowfish was actually mine as well because I love that burger so much, but I'm gonna give it up to Big Fire. I think those cocktails are so delicious. I love that smoked old fashioned. I really think Big Fire is an underrated restaurant at this point. I also wanna give a special shout out to Toothsome for being the only over the top ridiculous Instagrammable dessert I've ever had that's actually as delicious as it is beautiful. Let us know your favorite thing to eat in City Walk and let us know what other kind of content you want to see. Where else should we play Winner Picks Dinner? Thank you so much for following along. Be sure to like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, and follow us on all of our socials. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been magical. Sure has. Bye! Bye. Go watch the Disney Springs version now. I win that one too.